so where I come from, we don't get earthquakes. I grew up with seismic rage um, all around me and uh, anger that crumbled plaster from walls often shaking uh, the house to its foundation, but nothing that actually registered on a Richter scale or any scale outside of the house I grew up in. So I was sure to uh, not really want kids <laughs> for a long time. And, and then I met someone and they didn't really change how I felt about having kids, but they changed how I felt about myself. And that changed how I felt about having kids. <laughs> um, I didn't really know what a healthy upbringing or childhood really looked like, but it made me feel like maybe one day I could figure it out along the way and learn. So two years into our marriage, <laughs> with our baby's age still being counted in weeks, I got called to my mom's house to do a little bit of heavy lifting. Uh, <laughs> It's one of the heavier lifting jobs that's out there when you need to go home and go through the shit you left behind, <laughs> the shit you didn't need <laughs> when you're falling in love and starting a new life together and planning a future. So I felt a good bit of dread uh, as I left my wife and newborn behind and set forth uh, to help my mom purge her house of all the heaviness uh, and things so she could enthusiastically pursue uh, her next green pasture, <laughs> a 55 plus community about two hours south of where I was starting my own family. So iced coffee and <laughs> uh, like a college age drive and determination powered me through with my U-Haul and my industrial shredder that was there to <laughs> rip up all the stuff that we don't need to keep anyway. So uh, I open boxes, separate items, trash pile, donation pile, take pile, yard sale, and uh, found a box of old Hot Wheels cars. Uh, and I was very glad my stepfather hadn't sold or thrown out. And I, started to look at each one and saw memories and the scratches in the paint, so many of them. And I also came across hundreds of baseball cards and I saw things that I could share with my own son one day when he wasn't putting everything he picked up into his own mouth. <laughs> um, I saw things that hadn't been touched since they were carefully organized and put away with nine-year-old, 12-year-old hands. And through piles of books, I came across a couple titles on bipolar disorder. <laughs> I put them in the yard sale, uh, the yard sale pile, because they were the kind of the quasi manuals that you blindly buy on Amazon when you're first diagnosed, thinking that a book could ever prepare you for what life is like with a with a post traumatic uh, stress disorder and the moods that come with that. But um, my mom pulled those books out of the yard sale pile and said to me, we don't want anyone knowing that about us. As if things like that could be hidden, as if they were ever hidden. Um, I was, certainly wasn't a black sheep in my, my brood. So I sorted and I chucked. Uh, my faithful black dog was there along with me. I, I took her with me because I didn't want my spouse to worry about anything at all. Um, while I was gone, not even taking the dog out to go pay if she needed to go. And so she sat by my feet as I, I worked diligently. And out of nowhere, she got up and started kind of sniffing around nervously, sniffing the perimeter where, where the floor meets foundation. And uh, I didn't really think too much about it because dogs do get restless. But then I started feeling something myself. So, a little bit more backstory. My mom and stepdad weren't exactly like kind of moving on the greener pastures as much as they were um, kind of running away from a money pit. Uh, their McMansion was not well built as, as turned out to be the case with a lot of turn of the century, uh, quick going up uh, construction. And uh, even in the last couple of weeks before 
they uh, were moving. There were some unexpected floods in the basement area. So some of my things just had to be thrown away completely. And uh, I started to feel what my dog was feeling. Okay. And this is crazy kind of movement. And I started to hear this stomping upstairs. And that was a familiar stomping. The same heavy feet I grew up with. And I thought to myself, this piece of shit house is going to fall the frig apart before they can even get the hell out of here and move on and get their settlement. And then I heard my mom's voice <laughs> following those heavy footsteps. The whole fucking house is shaking. And that took me aback a little bit. Not the tone, but what she said. And that's when I realized it's not my mom. It's just an earthquake. <laughs> um, I don't really know what healthy, balanced childhood looks like from a rearview mirror, but uh, I'm willing to learn as I walk this path now, many years down further with my kid. I'm doing a not so, so bad job. Um, but at the end of the day, what you can hope for the most is that your kid feels safe and loved. And that's all I want for him. I came home with the Hot Wheels and baseball cards and a bunch of stuff I don't even remember. Um, uh, a bunch of books that I did keep that um, I would never make anybody feel ashamed for having on their shelf. I ended up finding out that the um, earthquake by then had happened pretty far south of us. And uh, as I went home and we were 45 minutes north of my mom's house, I was uh, able to find out that only tremors were felt where I lived and uh, with my spouse and my child. And when my spouse told me what she felt when it happened, she said, well, yeah, we were, we were changing diaper. And when we changed diapers and we were babies, we'd always have conversations. And, and she, uh, she said she, when she started to feel the swaying, she said, wow, buddy, I think that was an earthquake. <laughs>